Welcome to a lesson on how to determine the generating function for a recursively defined sequence. Let's say that a sequence satisfies the recurrence relation a sub n equals three times a sub n minus one minus two times a sub n minus two. If we set the right side of the equation equal to zero, it follows that a sub n minus three times a sub n minus one plus two times a sub n minus two equals zero for all but the first two terms. In other words, if we take a term of the sequence and subtract three times the previous term, and then add two times the term before that, we get zero. That will hold true for all but the first two terms of the sequence, because the recurrence relation does require two initial conditions. So after the first two terms, the sequence resulting from the calculations would be a sequence of zeros. This helps us determine a generating function for the sequence. Let's look at the example below. The sequence 1, 3, 7, 15, 31, 63, and so on satisfies the recurrence relation a sub n equals three times a sub n minus one minus two times a sub n minus two. We're asked to find the generating function for the sequence. Notice here they gave us several terms of the sequence. They didn't have to do this. They could have just told us a sub zero equals one and a sub one equals three as the initial conditions and we could have found the rest of the terms ourselves using the recurrence relation, which I've shown here below. And now so we're going to determine the generating function for the sequence. The key is using the equation a sub n minus three times a sub n minus one plus two times a sub n minus two equals zero for all the terms after a sub one. We begin by writing the generating series for the given sequence as a, which gives us a equals one plus three x plus seven x squared plus 15 x cubed plus dot, dot, dot. Next, because of the minus three times a sub n minus one, we multiply a by negative three x, which shifts every term over one spot and multiplies them by negative three. Negative three x times a is equal to zero minus three x plus nine x squared minus 21 x cubed plus dot, dot, dot. And then because of the plus two times a sub n minus two, in the third line, we multiplied a by two x squared, which shifted every term over two spots and multiplied by two. Two x squared a is equal to zero plus zero plus two x squared plus six x cubed plus dot, dot, dot. When we add up the corresponding terms, again, we are taking each term, subtracting three times the previous term and adding two times the term before that. This will happen for every term after a sub one because a sub n minus three times a sub n minus one plus two times a sub n minus two equals zero. In general, we might have two terms from the beginning of the generating series, although in this case, the second term happens to be zero as well. Notice when we add all three equations together, on the left we have a minus three x a plus two x squared a. On the right, we only have one term. We have one, every other sum is zero. To find the generating function, we now solve for a. On the left, we factor out the greatest common factor of a from the expression, which gives us the quantity one minus three x plus two x squared times a equals one. The last step is to divide both sides of the equation by one minus three x plus two x squared, giving us a generating function a is equal to one divided by the quantity one minus three x plus two x squared. I hope you found this helpful.